There's no other thing. Hey, everybody. How's everybody doing? We are live on Facebook. This is Sean Ventura of the Lights Camera Pro Podcast. And I'm here with Alex, who is a fashion photographer, an entrepreneur, and a writer. And we're going to get into her. She even made a short film, so she's a filmmaker. We're going to get into all that today. Uh, hey, Alex, how you doing? Hi, Sean. Thank you for having me here. Oh. I'm super excited, and I'm doing great. Great. Um, I'm super excited, too. So I'm just going to run my, um, if I can find it here, I'm going to run my little um, Lights Camera Pro podcast thing here. And then um, after that, I am going to run an ad from Restream over it. Hey, this is Restream. I'm partnering with them. Uh, you can send your videos to like 30 different places, including Facebook Live, YouTube Live. And you can even broadcast straight from Restream. Um, I'm using Ecamm Live now, but you can broadcast from there. It's a very cool product. You can see that I have my logo, their logo down here. And um, in the uh, Facebook Live post that I've made is a referral link if you want to check them out. So go ahead and check out Restream. It's a very cool product, and I will actually be trying it live tomorrow. I've been doing some testing. So, Alex, I'm so excited because you do so many things. I love people who do lots of different things. Like, I um, am a writer, actor, director, podcaster, doing a million things. Um, so, I love it when people do a bunch of stuff. But uh, let's talk about your fashion photography first. Um, I did this thing where I brought in your photos because they're beautiful and for you to describe them without seeing them is just really bizarre. So can I just bring up a few here and you'll talk about them? Yeah, definitely. Sure. Okay, so this is one of them and I'm just going to blur my background out here so you can just look at her photo and not look at my face. Um, so do you want to talk about this photo? It's so beautiful and, and uh, the uh, horse. Actually, and... I, I can see it. So <laughs> if you could tell me which is. Oh, you can't see it. Oh, okay. Um, I didn't realize that you couldn't see it. Yeah, you're just on Skype, so you can't see what. Um, yeah, maybe you should maybe you should uh, share your screen with me. Um, I don't know if I can do that, but what you can do is go on Facebook on your phone, and look up, um, which okay, is totally fine, and you can see what we're broadcasting live, and you'll be able to see the photos. But um, I don't know if I can do that. Before. Yeah, I can share my screen, but then it'll mess everything else up. So if you just go to Facebook Live, oh. the Lights Camera Pro podcast okay, page. Okay, I get it. You got it? And then you can see the – can you see the photo yes, there? Yes. Cool. Yes, it's the one with the horse. Okay. Yeah, the one with the horse. So if you can just talk about how you did that, um, that would be awesome. Go ahead. So this was a photo shoot I organized for fun uh, with my friend from photography school. And um, – you know, because she was going to, uh, she was going horse riding a few times a week, and she had this friend who, who was riding so well, and she said, you know, would you like to come with me and take pictures of this girl on the horse? Let's make a photo shoot on the horse. So I asked my other friend, who is a stylist, to borrow me a dress that would be big enough, because here you can't see, but this dress was really big, was mm -hmm. covering the whole back of the horse, and. Um, and we just, you know, we went there. It was obviously uh, a little difficult uh, taking pictures with the horse. She was uh, going all around us and uh, trying various, uh, you know, things and various actions with the horse. Um, I also have pictures when the horse is standing only on its back, uh, back legs. Mm -hmm. And uh, and it was it was something completely new. It was my first photo shoot with a horse so it was more like you know she was going around and we were trying to catch uh, as she moves trying to get it natural and it was challenging or so you know not to be in uh, you know not to have any accident with the horse right right so let me ask you because this is this is a very high-end photograph like I'm, I'm not an expert but I have lots of friends or photographers and what camera are you using? Are you using just, there's no lighting, you're just opening up the aperture? What, what exactly are you doing? Um, 
at, to get that kind of photograph? Are you using the old lenses in some way or what, what is your secret or do you not want to tell it? Uh, no, I, I don't have problems with that. It's, you know, I'm a total equipment minimalist. I believe in knowing one lens very good and one camera very good. And I believe you can really do a lot of, uh, achieve a lot with one camera if you know it well. So instead of uh, experimenting with various uh, cameras, various lenses, I really have one. Uh, so this one, if I remember well, this was taken with Nikon 610 and uh, the lens is 50 millimeters, 1.4. Um, and I just prefer the natural light. Now okay. I'm starting to use a bit of flash, but I'm very good with natural light because at the beginning when I was starting, I didn't have any money for studio or flash or any right. light. So I just had to use what I had. And um, and that's how I, how I learned. And this is actually, I prefer the natural light. I believe that if you can play it well, uh, it looks the best. Um, yeah. Yes, this one is completely natural, natural picture just taken with my camera of me standing somewhere in the grass and trying not to get under the horse. <laughs> right, right. So um, did you, I don't know the correct, I'm a video editor, so color correction is the correct term for video. I don't know the term for, did you colorize this photograph at all or is that the natural color? Uh, obviously I did the post-production. So, did. and okay. I also take pictures in RAW. Uh, so the colors are naturally more gray mm -hmm. because so that later it's the basis for, for post-producing. So, uh, yes, I made obviously some color correction, uh, adding contrast and, and color to make it ga gain this depth that, uh, that you can see. Yes. Yeah. So cool. All right. So let's do another one. I'm going to blur myself out here with this very technical post-it. I got a post-it that blurs me out. Um, so this one here, tell us about this. Can you okay, see it wait on a Facebook? Second. Sure. Uh, so it appears with a little bit uh, it, um, delay, so I'm waiting yeah. for it to appear. Oh, it's the one with the red dress and, and there's a pigeon and it looks like it's in Rome. Oh. No, it's Venice. It's Venice, okay. Uh, St. Mark's, uh, is that St. Mark's Square? Yes, this okay. is precisely St. Mark's yeah. uh, Square. Okay, now I see it. Yes, it's in Venice. And um, actually, we took this picture. We were planning to shoot with this dress in another location, but they didn't let us in because in Venice, it's very difficult, even if this was another non commercial. Um, photo shoot it was just uh, of me and my friends um you know even if we said okay it's just for personal use the pictures they didn't let us in uh, mm. if, because they said ah oh, we have to take care of our image etc but you know there are all the tourists that go there and post all the pictures tagging this place and uh, and they didn't let us in with the model beautifully dressed so we were a bit disappointed we just went to the san mark square and um yeah we were shooting and it was a completely accidental shot with the pigeon i just saw the pigeon flying and i uh, and i took a picture and uh, uh, later you know i checked the, my screen and i was like i took the pigeon you know, <laughs> and the tourists started laughing of me can i see can i see it so <laughs> yeah that's, that's behind the scenes of this picture right very cool well um i love it and i saw somewhere on your blog or your website that you said that someday you want to have your pictures in vogue. And let me tell you, like, I, once again, I'm not an expert, but these photos are definitely vogue quality. Um, yeah, this is, this is on my list. <laughs> definitely. Yeah. I mean, I, I, my goodness, I'm surprised they haven't called you because it's not easy to take these kind of pictures. Is it? Do you think it's easy? No, I just think it's, um, there's a lot of intuition in these pictures because it's not that I changed so much the way I'm taking pictures uh, now that I was taking before, but I think I learned to see and actually my intuition and subconscious and don't know how to call it sees faster than my brain and I just know when to take a picture and how to take it to make it um, look like this. Yes. 
And there's a very similar thing. I know I'm off camera now, but there's a there's a similar thing with video editing where it just flows and it's almost like the video, the shoot is telling you where to cut. You're not deciding where to cut. The 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 sound and the yeah. music and the picture is just suggesting to you where you should cut. So it's a similar thing. I totally understand it. I, yeah, I know what it's like to be an artist, but um it's definitely like, for example, even today I posted um, uh, a post on uh, on Instagram about one picture where, you know, I didn't have really a plan for this photo shoot. These were test photos of a model for an agency and we went, just went to the park and suddenly, oh, there were those nice flowers and the other flowers. And suddenly after a few shots it appeared, oh, we are doing Alice in Wonderland. But it's it wasn't the idea. I just right. came it out after after we started shooting but really later the whole photo shoot seemed like alice in wonderland right and it's very organic i get that can you see now what the next picture is yes i can see okay so my this, favorite text I, I mean i hate i i don't want to um critique your photos at all because they're excellent they're amazing but this seems like more of a fashion shoot and more of something you would see in a in a fashion magazine was that your intention to do that Yes, this was uh, this was a fa uh, fashion shoot. This was a photo shoot for a model agency. So we had a stylist, and uh, okay. we took it. We took this picture here in Milan. It's actually right close to the Duomo of Milan. There are always these uh, taxis, and I just sit in the middle of the road and try not to get hit by any of them. But yeah, yeah, it is this place. I thought it might have been in Florence because there's a train station in Florence where all the cars line up, but it it's in Milan, right? Yeah. Yeah, I hate to make the picture smaller, but I don't, I don't want to be off screen the whole time. All right, so <laughs> are you having fun with this or, or is this horrible to talk yeah. about? Okay, let's... No, I like, I like talking about the pictures and their, their backstage is usually very, very... Uh, very interesting and, and fun. So, right. yeah, I like, okay, enjoy try... talking about yeah, let's do a couple more and then we'll go to um, this one is the one with the balloons, but it's the one where she has her leg up in the air and she's in front of like okay. a pink bush. Um, and we'll talk about I, I definitely want to hear about your short film and I want to hear about your books and about your blog and what you do with people to help them be more, be more creative. Um, but let's talk about this one with the balloons. How did this come about? So um, this was a photo shoot I made in Warsaw. This is actually on a roof of a library in Warsaw. There is a very beautiful garden. And uh, I had this um, model of an agency that I had to take pictures of. And actually, I contacted them for another project that I did a week before. Just they, they answered me too late and I already had another model for that project. So I didn't want to disappoint them. So I said, OK, I can make another project with your model as well. And I was really excited because the girl is a dancer. So and I love taking pictures of dancers. So I thought, OK, let's let's play with it. Let's do something about it. And then I had the idea with the balloons and, you know, this thing like flying, jumping, dancing with the balloons. Uh, so, you know, I bought, I don't remember actually how many balloons. And later I just arrived to the park before and I, uh, you know, I was sitting there with the gas bottle and filling in all the balloons mm -hmm. so that they fly. Uh, and, you know, the model calls me, where are you? I'm like, I have a green car and there are all the balloons on top of it. It's difficult not to notice me. <laughs> uh, and when we were shooting, there were like all the kids coming to me. Can I buy a balloon? <laughs> <laughs> like from the park, the park was full. It was the evening and all the kids were coming to me and saying, honey, I will give you those balloons. Just I first I have to stop, finish the shooting. And, you know, there came also some engagement photo shoot. Can we borrow the balloons for a moment? So oh, everybody man. was totally balloons and uh, they worked perfectly and eventually yes i gave them to the kids in the park very cool very cool story awesome well i love the photo i love the um it's kind of like there's some muted colors in here but then there's also the the balloons are very vibrant and the green um are you messing with that with the color correction once again uh yes i do uh Post a lot of color post-production because, you know, in um, 
photography school, what they taught me, uh, we were actually analyzing paintings. And we were analyzing the colors in the paintings that sometimes you know the painting seems quite plain, but if you look well in the highlights, there is red, in the background, there is green, and this contrast between the opposite colors make the image deeper. And I use this a lot in my, in my pictures because I try not to make so much photoshopping like, uh, you know, doing photo montage and changing the reality, but mm -hmm. what I add is the contrast and the color to, to make this, to achieve this effect. Right. And are you able, this is a very dorky question, but I'm going to ask it. Are you able to isolate like the balloon color and isolate the bush color when, in your program? What program are you using? I use Photoshop and Lightroom. And Lightroom, yes, okay. I, can, uh, uh, I, can, I can do it. In general, I work on the images of the, uh, of the, on the colors of the whole image. Uh, but at times this correction of the of each point is uh, is also helpful if there is something really really disturbing and now you know you are more into video I'm more into photos now that I'm editing videos I'm searching for the same tools and then trying to uh, achieve the same things with right. videos just it's more difficult <laughs> with the moving image yeah it is more difficult definitely you need the higher end um, resolve to do it and um, the higher end flame and smoke and those kind of things. But you can do it. A I work in Premiere. You can do it a little bit in Premiere. Um, you can definitely do overall, but it's hard to get that secondary color correction uh, where you're isolating. I was doing uh, Da Vinci lately and there it was, I was managing to do more um, correction of each color separately. Okay, cool. Yeah, uh, I haven't messed with DaVinci. I have a friend, Mark, who uh, works in it in um, New York City. He works for Showtime and he works on the show Homeland and some other Showtime shows. And he has gone from being a effects person to a DaVinci Resolve color correction. Co he calls it color grading. And um, he grades the entire show. Like you said, he gets raw footage, which is, is like mm -hmm. a dull, milky gray and then he can mm. pull the colors out of it. And it's a very cool thing. I messed around with it for a couple of years, but it's, um, it's, uh, you have to be very detailed and want to get into details. And I'm Yes, and you need a very good screen and, and you have to be like, um, have really fresh eyes because after you wa wash yes. it for a while, the colors seem the same. Yeah, everything kind of, you need to take a break and go outside Definitely. and look at the, sunshine and the grass um okay so we're gonna do our favorite my favorite photo and i'm gonna blur myself again here just so you could talk about it this is a beautiful photo just tell us about where it is and how was it a windy day or is someone pulling that thing with strings how did this photo happen okay so i can see the photo but i imagine which it is oh it's the uh it's um, the woman in the pink dress i know it's, it's my phone probably yeah <laughs> Uh, so this picture is taken in the very center of Warsaw. Yes, I see it now. Yes, it's uh, in the very center of Warsaw. And um, it was um, a photo shoot that I called the flowers and the city. And because um, I've seen some pictures of um, Solve the ball that were like few dresses, one on each other, and the models jumping. It was the photo shoot in the studio, and I just loved the effect that the girls looked like flowers. And I contacted this uh, stylist and said, hey, I would like to try it. Just this, as I love shooting on locations, I want to do it on location. And so this photo shoot was postponed a few times. Actually, we were really, really lucky. It was a very windy day, but uh, the model was also very... Uh, like she was a really great model, so she was also making all the all the material fly, okay. jumping and posing cool. at the same time. Uh, oh, there was also a makeup artist and a stylist and a hairdresser. So in case if there was too little wind, they were help, helping from the sides. But as I remember, in this case, it was just the model and the wind. Very cool. I love it. I love the contrast of the the pink and the and the gray and. She's beautiful and the dress is beautiful. It's just a beautiful photo. I mean, you've ca you definitely capture moments 
for yeah, sure. This, this is my With, thing. <laughs> this is your thing, capturing moments, um, because you yeah. definitely do it, and it and you do it really well. So um, let's talk a little bit about you made a film. You're you are a filmmaker. What was your film about? So you know, actually, before I was taking pictures, I I dreamed about being a filmmaker. I started taking pictures because it was just easier, but and I didn't get into film school back in Poland, but it has it stayed there. So actually, I'm on weekends. I'm attending a film school here in Milan, and so I made this short film a year ago. This year, I was already uh, I was supposed to shoot another one, just there was the lockdown, so I don't know when I will shoot the next one. Uh, so my short film is um, eight minutes, and it's called Mr. John. And it's about this middle-aged man that has very boring, very organized life that one day um, notices the imprint of lips uh, on, on a glass, on a window, and starts fantasizing about a woman who left it and how did she leave it there. And because of this, he doesn't notice his neighbor who is trying to talk to him and get closer to him. Mm. And and um, what did you shoot it on, if I can ask? Like, what was the camera? Were you using a DSLR to do that because you're a photographer? Um, no, it was the camera we had from our teacher that's a movie di director, and we had Alexa. So it was oh, wow. a really, really good camera, yeah. Oh, wow. So was that something new you had to learn? Are the Alexa lenses different than the photo, uh, than the photo camera les lenses? Or are they the same? Actually, I found my photographic background very, very helpful because sometimes I can just say, you know, I know what shot I want and I just say, I'll oh, take a 50 or take an 85 and it's exactly the shot I want when my my other colleagues who don't have this background are still struggling, trying and they tell me, no, maybe it should be 85. No, it will be 50. You will see. So I didn't see that much uh, of a difference. It was actually very, very helpful. This background with lenses and, and upper and the depth of field mm -hmm. so and also my uh, background in post-production because I could imagine like I see the picture and I know what I can do with it with the image with the moving image I also see the possibilities so I know what can work better what can wor work worse so it was my background photography was definitely very helpful and are the other students in the class helping you because I, I've made four short films and and it's kind of overwhel overwhelming because you're the director and you're bringing the craft service and you're uh, hiring people and making sure they're not late. And you're doing you have a million hats. Uh, even one of my short films, I acted in. So it was like I was all over the wow. place. It was crazy. Uh, but did you have help from the other students or friends? Yes, we had a lot of help, actually. All, all the school was helping us. So I was the writer, director and editor. Uh, but I had an assistant who was like the director's assist assistant of uh, directors. So it was really, really helpful because he was helping me organize. Uh, there were other students from my class and other students from more advanced class who were helping us, for example, with making the, the shots, the cameraman. Um, and uh, with all the logistics, yes, there was a friend who brought a van. Uh, the school helped us um, rent the... Uh, equipment so and all the time there was the our teacher with us so this was definitely definitely helpful because i've done a few short films before the school and uh, well it was like mission impossible <laughs> <laughs> so where can people see the short film is that on you is is everything on your website like you have a website and it has your photography yeah. and it has your teaching and it has uh, your books. Is the is the short film also on there? Uh, actually, not. I think the only section I'm missing on my website is the video one. Okay. Uh, I think it's on it's on YouTube. Uh, it's Mr. John, and there must be a link on my uh, Facebook page. But Facebook yes, page. the okay. section of video is the is the missing one on my page too. Right. Right. That's cool. Um, and do you want to tell, we'll do it at the end also, but do you want to tell people, um, while I bring up your book, wh what your website is and how they can get, find it? So my website is alexandragallert.com 
Uh, it's Alexandra with KS. And uh, so there you can find my pictures, more information about me. There's also my blog and, um, and my free audio training because now, except of being a photographer, I'm focusing also on helping other artists become full-time full -time artists work full-time uh, on what they love. Because I see too many people who never even try it. They tell me, oh, it's risky being an artist and I will just take this safe career. And I'm like heartbroken. I'm like, you, you are so amazing. Why, why are you doing it to yourself? And, uh, you know, I read somewhere that 70% of people hate their jobs. Yes. And I was like, whoa, that's so huge. And I believe if more people would do what they love, the world would be a better place. And I think many people of those who never try are those who are creatives and artists. And that's why I'm focusing now on this. That's fantastic. And I also read that 70%, 75% of people who go to school for something don't do that career. They end up doing something else. Um, but there, there is a woman, um, her name is Ashley King and she's in the UK and I interviewed her a couple weeks ago and she has a very similar thing to you. So I think it would be great for you to contact her. Um, she's a creative, sure. she's a creative consultant and she does events. She's also a podcaster, but she has this podcast called nurture your zest and it's about how to unleash your creativity and everybody's like, I got a job and I have kids and I can't do it and I don't have the time. And her whole podcast is about letting your creative out and making time for it. So I don't think it's the exact same thing, but it's very similar. And you guys might um, be able to cross promote or help each other. So, so yeah, I'll give you that um, name again at the end if, uh, if you oh, want. Oh, yeah, that's Right. So let's talk about this book. This is, um, I used to have a black cat called Feldman and <laughs> I made three children's books about my, my black cat. I'm trying to publish them on, um, Apple or Amazon or whatever, but I keep doing podcasts. But, um, so tell us about this book. It's a fantasy book. You, this is your yes, book. It's a fantasy. Yes, this is my book. It's a fantasy novel of approximately 460 pages. Wow. Uh, it has been published in last December uh, in Poland because it's in Polish because uh, obviously it's my mother tongue and if I write, I it's, you know, novel I have to write it in Polish. <laughs> There's no yeah. way to write it, no way I write it in any other language. The funny thing about the cat is that everybody notices the cat <laughs> and I didn't want the cat on the cover. Oh, uh, and I because you know for me it was just a funny element of the of the book of mm -hmm. the story and my editor told me no it's very important for marketing and I was so angry I told to my best friend you know if I would have known that they would make me this thing I would remove this cat from my book literally. <laughs> <laughs> but it, but yes, everybody everybody talks about the cat. And you know what <laughs> I I know you had not know about that movie Cujo with the crazy dog who bites everybody but i just thought that the cat was gonna do something like come back from the dead or i don't know be be on well, her it, back it, while she's flying i, I don't know what the story what is the story of the book well uh yeah it's a very important character the cat well the story is about a young girl who uh, doesn't know her parents she lives with a wizard and 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 an older older guy and um, this wizard always travels. She would like to travel with him because the city she lives in is very gray and, and sad, but he never lets her. And then someday there are some weird, uh, you know, hooded figures appearing in the city and the wizard goes on a trip and disappears. And so she has to escape from the city and make this big trip to find uh, this wizard that is her friend and on the way she discovers really who she is. She has friends and uh, and this trip, you know, that she's always been dreaming about is is not exactly what she what she has always imagined. And it's it's a lot about growing up like this, this story. Very cool. Um... Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, uh, I, I don't have a lot of fantasy books in my uh, bookshelf back here, but uh, I think uh, it's a very cool cover. I love the colors. <laughs> I don't know what else to say, but maybe someone out there will love <laughs> so, it. So, I, I just like the 
cover, but to, there, there oh, are two, like there are two voices. Some people, there's love or hate. There, yeah. There's nothing in between. There are all people, many people tell me I love it, but there are others who tell me I've never seen such an ugly cover. So I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Um, yeah, so I would never say that. So that that's not going to happen. Um, so let's go to your ebook. It's going to make it a little smaller here. And this is this this is part of becoming the full time artist, right? Which was what I was going to ask you. So, yes. so if you want to talk yes. about that. Um... So this book comes from my experience because uh, after I moved from Poland to Italy, I was trying to find a job. I was just graduated in law. Mm -hmm. And um, I, for around eight months, I couldn't, I couldn't find a job here in Italy. And I was really depressed because I said, okay, I have three degrees. I speak five languages and I can't even get an interview for a secretary. Wow. And I was really depressed at that time. And at some point I just decided, well, okay, you know, I'm putting so much effort into getting a career I will hate most probably. So why not, as it's already going so bad, it can't be worse. Mm -hmm. Why not find something that I may actually like? And so I decided to be to become a fashion photographer. And actually, in around six months, I managed to work full time as a as a fashion photographer. And um, so you know, I used all the skills that I learned studying before about business and marketing and all the modern ways that are actually the. Mm, they're supposed to make things faster, right? So it's not like this traditional path because when I first arrived to Milan, I asked one photographer, oh, what do you advise me? How should I do it? Tell me, well, you know, you should become an assistant of a photographer or work in a studio as an assistant for many years and then, uh, you know, make connections, take pictures, create a portfolio and maybe in 10 years you will be able to start on your own. And I was like, no way, it's not that I you know, left my legal career to now carry bags for 10 years, especially if I'm small and it's, you know, being an assistant is a really heavy job for me because all those lights, all those equipment, yeah, 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 yeah. for me it's a challenge. So I was like, no way. And I just decided to do it a bit my way, finding other solutions and, and I managed. So this ebook is a is an essence of everything that I've learned during this process of what I've done uh, what worked and what didn't work for me, what not to focus on and what to pay attention to, um, to start earning uh, as soon as possible and to, you know, to make this, maybe it's not that, it's not a, you know, become a millionaire book or, I, you know, I'm not making these promises you can't keep, I'm just, it comes from my own experience. So, it's not that you can start taking pictures for Chanel or Vogue in six months, no, right. it's still on my list, still coming. But what I say is that you can keep building your experience, your portfolio and your business while you are already working in it. So you are already making money from it. And on this, you keep working to arrive to the higher levels. So this is my point because, you know, other times you have to, oh, I have this a nine to five job and I would like to take these pictures or do something, but I don't have the time. This is the point to have the time and money to work on what you actually care about. Yes. Yes. And I totally agree with that because um, I was a video editor for 25 years and now I'm into this podcast thing and now video casting and I am fully into it. I am applying for jobs uh, in podcasting. Um, being a podcast producer, editor, whatever. And I guess I would take a job as a video editor because I, I, I left a company a year ago and I have severance. But um, I don't know. I, I'm really going for I really want to work in a company that does podcasts and still do my podcasts, but then work on other people's podcasts because right now it's my thing. It's what I love right now. And I'm kind of, um, you know, kind of sick of the video thing. It's, it's uh, sitting in a dark room, eight, 10 hours a day doing very cool stuff. But when you've done pretty much everything, it's like, okay, let's try something else. So yeah. this is a very cool thing. So, so just tell us about, um, we're at about 35 minutes. We go about 45. Tell us about your website and you you said you did some audio training like 
this is just you just have the floor tell us about whatever you want to tell us about your business uh, so yes I on my website there is um, the form that to get uh, my free audio training because when I talk to artists um, you know who ask me for advice the thing that I hear most often is oh I lack motivation because I don't know how to start and I don't know what my next step should be and inspired by this and hearing it so many times I've created this audio training that is um, from a hobbyist to a full-time artist in five steps and it's around 20 minutes uh, training where I talk about like five major steps what you have to do and what the whole process looks like so that you always have an idea what to do and so that you never uh, you know we are never stuck again so it's a kind of a roadmap uh, also because many many artists uh, are like oh, I don't have enough of this I don't have enough of that I don't know how to start so are finding all the excuses not to not to actually start uh, pursuing this uh, this career uh, so that's why I created this free audio training so that it's like an inspiration and a roadmap for them to to know how the pro whole process looks like, what the whole process looks like, how how to start, what to do, and to give them an idea how to keep going. Very cool. And there are lots of people like that um, also in the podcast industry or constantly on the Facebook groups, and they're asking, I want to do it. I'm kind of shy. I don't like my voice. And those people need a push. But I don't know if you're the same way as me is I'm an artist and I've always created stuff and I'll just, I haven't done a painting in 20 years and then I'll just go and buy a canvas and start painting. Cause I just feel like today I need to paint and I don't know why nobody's telling me I need to paint. I haven't decided to paint. I just feel it and I go and paint or I go and make, all right, I, I got to make this short film because of this and blah, blah, blah. Uh, I got to make a podcast now. It's just what I have to do. And it's not, it's just coming from somewhere. I don't want to say God, but it's coming from somewhere and it's just, I always need to make things and I can't stop it. And I'm just a creative person. So do you feel you're more like that, that you're always making stuff because you do so many things? Yes, it's like I have this exactly the feelings you are saying that there are things coming from inside and you just have to do it. So sometimes I literally say to my husband, I have a pain, like physical pain of not taking pictures. I'm like, I'm getting crazy. Yeah. And, you know, people tell me, you know, just go to the garden and take pictures of the flowers. I'm like, no, it's not about it. I want to make a photo shoot. Okay, let's find a model, make a party, <laughs> but something. Even if I just go with this model to this park, but I have to do something that 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 I like and it's not just about clicking 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 and taking pictures it's about taking doing something I like and that's exactly how I started writing the book I never considered it might be published I just started writing because it popped in my head and something was telling me to do it yeah <laughs> so I don't know yeah I don't know what, what that is. thing is I don't know what it is but some people have it and it's just like this creativity bug inside them that that makes them do stuff all right. Well, uh, lastly, I would just ask you and we'll wrap it up, Alex. Do you have any advice for people who want to do, I mean, you've kind of talked about it a little bit, but if you want to talk some more just about people who want to be a photographer or be a writer or what is that thing that you would say that got you to do it uh, besides the little bug inside? Was, was there anything else that got you to do these things? So I think the most important part to actually do it is applying this active mindset that uh, all the cliche phrases they tell you like sky's the limit and you can get everything you want. Yes, it's all true, but there's a but that they don't talk about, but it's up to you, but you have to get it and you have to be active because if you just sit and wish, oh, I want to be a singer, I want to be an actor, like, you know, opportunities don't just won't come your way. Opportunities come if you keep doing stuff, like one of my favorite quotes is uh, luck favors the prepared mind. I read it in the screenwriting book and and I think it's exactly, exactly this. You just have to, you know, try anything that comes to your mind. Just start right now, no matter how little you know, no matter how you feel unprepared. You know, when I started, to, when I decided to become a 
fashion photographer, I was in a new country. I didn't know any models, any makeup artists, nobody. I was in a small town in Italy. I wasn't in, in Milan at the time. And uh, I didn't know really nobody here. So I had no idea how to start. My only idea was let's, let's invest time into Instagram because it was the only idea I had. I, I didn't know anything else how to do. And so I started you know, uh, posting on Instagram, studying, I bought a course. And after a month, I got a message from a fashion blogger from India telling me, hi, I'm coming for the Milan Fashion Week. Would you like to take pictures of me during the shows, entering the backstage of the shows and so on? But, you know, I did the, the smallest thing that popped into my head, post on Instagram and study Instagram. But and this opportunity would never come my way if I wouldn't do this thing that might seem silly or crazy or not leading so whatever you know no matter how small the step just just start and try doing you know scrolling through facebook groups talking to people whatever this is how this is how the snowball starts rolling yes i totally agree i totally agree and um i don't want to get into my whole life and all the different things that i've done but i feel like life is just a blur and it just goes by very quickly And there are some times when life is slow. It's weird. Like in high school, you can't wait to leave and get out. But, (laughs) but, but I do feel like when I, when I die someday, I want to feel like I've done things. I don't want to feel like I just went to this nine to five job for 30 years and paid for my, you know, kids college. Like I I feel like I, I want to just be like, you know what? I traveled a bunch I did a bunch of theaters. I made some films like I did stuff. It's okay. I'm fine with it. It's okay. So I, I totally get what you're saying. And I think it's inspiring for people. That's why I love doing this. I love talking to artists and podcasters and actors and directors because they are creative people just think differently. They just, they make things and they want to get out there and they want to help. Um, this has been awesome. Thank you so much, Alex. Thank you for having me. Yeah. And do you want to just mention your website again? What was the website address? Uh, website is Alexandra Gallert, Alexandra with K-S, uh, G-A-L-E-R-T dot com. Okay, cool. Well, we have your, your name is here. You, you, if you look at the Facebook, you can see the first part of your name with the D Gisaro, but... But yeah, people will find it. Yeah, it's it's my surname before I got married, so right. <laughs> it didn't change the link. So. Well, thank you so much for doing this, and I wish you the best of luck. Thank you for having me, and yeah, I wish you luck too, and it was really amazing to talk to you. Awesome, and I just love your photography, so I'll be checking out your website from time to time, and uh, take care, and have a great day. Thanks, Alex. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.